Hello and welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. And behind me, you already see the Buffalo. That's because I'm here at the Buffalo Trace Distillery. The Buffalo Trace Distillery is very old. It has very old buildings. Here you have buildings from uh, 1700, 1800, 1900 and the years 2000. And it is so old and beautiful that the United States recognizes it as now as an historic landmark. And also the, the land we are on is very big. It is 1.6 square kilometers. So the property we are on are enormous. And today we're gonna have a look why Buffalo Trace is so famous and makes such a good bourbon. So I'm sitting here with Drew Mayville. You're the master blender here and the head of quality. Yes. You're here for 11 years now mm -hmm. and you're in the whiskey business for 35 years. So there is a lot of experience. Yes. Thank you for having us here. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so what are we having now? This is, uh, I, w I thought it would be very good to look at different recipes that we, pr we produce here at Buffalo Trace Distillery and do some tastings. Is that all right with you? Yeah, very nice. Good. I'm looking forward for the tastings. But before I do that, before we taste, I want to go through a little bit about what makes bourbon. Okay. So when you make bourbon, you first of all have to have water. Water is very important, especially from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. You need... To make bourbon, you need corn. So at least 51% has to be made with corn. And corn will give you a nice, fruity, sweet taste. So when we taste these, you're going to taste the corn in the recipe. And then, yes? So we all have, these three are all bourbons. One is a straight rye. So one is a straight bourbon. rye. Yeah, okay. I, I wanted to save that one for you. Ah, okay. So bourbon though, at least 51% corn, and then the first one we're going to look at has wheat as the secondary grain. So 51% okay. corn and wheat. So let's taste that one. How's that? Okay. Wheat is very subtle and very smooth tasting grain. So when you taste this, you're going to taste a very sweet, smooth, delicious, almost velvety texture in your mouth. And this is we our Weller. This is our W.L. Weller. W.L. Weller. Yeah, 45% alcohol. So when you nose it, it's very, very nice color. Now, there's mm -hmm. no color added to bourbon, right? This is natural. Yeah, that will be illegal. Yes. <laughs> when you nose it, you what do you smell? First you get... It's nice caramely. Yeah. I had the vanilla first. <laughs> yeah, you have vanilla. Black That's from yours. the aging process. Very pleasant on the nose. It's not sharp. Definitely no, not sharp. No. It's smooth. And then when you when you actually taste it, you get that sweetness up front from the corn. Oh, yeah. Isn't it Definitely. smooth? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And 90 proof or 45% alcohol, it's very gentle on the palate. Yeah, so it's, it's a it's light. Gentle, smooth, and. You get some wood components, not not a lot because it's aged around seven yeah, years. Yeah, now I get the wood components before right. I had more. Yeah. The sweet up very from some of the corn, from the recipe. Mm hmm. I'm not sure how I. It's also a bit. It's, I don't, it's like cake or bread, and I'm, I'm not quite sure with it. I Probably think. the grain gives yeah. you that. Yeah. yeah. I like it. But very, very easy to drink, right? Mm -hmm. It's easy to drink, yeah. So we, we would mm -hmm. make other products af as, as it ages up, you would have other products. We make a Weller 12 mm -hmm. here. So the 12-year-old will give you the same flavors, but be more dominant with wood flavors and the dryness in the palate. So if you like that mature flavor, you're going to really like the 12-year-old. And then obviously, as you go further out, into ages, you get into the Pappy Van Winkle wine. So mm -hmm. this is a base recipe for what we so, make. Um, and that's a weeded bourbon. How old are we looking at? This is around seven years, but we base it on, on our taste profile. Okay. okay, around seven years. Yes, sir. Okay, I like I like the weed whiskey. It is. Not many, very many distilleries do the weed whiskey. Correct. Most are rye bourbons, and we're going to yeah. look at a rye is it, is it Why do they not do the weed? Is it hard to do the weed, or is it... 
Well, I think it's what they've done traditionally is the rye bourbons. You know, it's a good it's a good question, and and not a lot of wheat bourbon recipes are out there. And you know, when it's labeled, it doesn't say it's a wheat bourbon usually. Mm. But W. L. Weller was the first gentleman in history to switch rye and put wheat in it, and that's why it's named after W. L. Weller. Oh, okay. So, so he was kind of a pioneer, like. Uh, we are here at this distillery, and that's that's why I think it's important to call it W. Weller. Oh, it says uh, the original wheated yes, bourbon. Yes, but not all wheated bourbons will say it's wheat. Okay, yeah, great bourbon. So it's a very great product. So, this, the, if you take the wheat out, and most uh, bourbons in Kentucky are made with rye as a secondary grain. Mm -hmm. So you have corn in the majority. And then you have rye as the secondary smaller amount of grain. So rye is very spicy and aromatic. Mm -hmm. So right away, before you even taste the next sample of Buffalo Trace, which is a rye bourbon, you're, you know what it's going to taste like already. So see if it's true when you smell and taste this one, that you get more of a spicy, aromatic nose. And it's aged around eight years plus. So it, it's still a bourbon? It says, 51% yes, corn? It's a rye bourbon, yes. But we and 95% of the bourbons are like this, rye. Okay. But we still have rye in it. But yes, and there's corn. So you, the corn should still be uh, there. You should be able to see it. And we like to call this one well-balanced. And the reason we think that is because if you smell and taste the wood components, the sweet sweetness from the corn and the spiciness, nothing dominates. Yeah, I can't. Because you get a blend of all those elements. Can't quite put my finger right. on what, you, what I get here. Right. It's so a, It's it, a mixture. It, it's a, it's a <laughs> nice, well-balanced whiskey. And that's why this is my favorite, because nothing dominates. So when you taste it, you'll see more of that sweetness and spiciness as compared to the previous one. You get a lot more after uh, spiciness on the palate, especially on the tip of the tongue. Ooh. Yeah. But you still get that wood flavor. But nothing dominates. Notice how it's all balanced very nicely. It's rye, yes. I can see, feel that. You can feel but that. But it's, it's still easy to drink. Some it's rye still is a bit, bit more forward, a bit more spicy. Well, yes, and we'll get to that. <laughs> but it's... I don't, I don't feel it that much in the back. Uh, I have a, I have a, a sweet feeling all you, around. You do initially, especially, right? Mm -hmm. But initially, you have the the rye on. You on have the, the rye, yes. It's strange though. <laughs> but, but but you I see like it. quite a bit of difference between the two recipes so mm -hmm. far. So how much ABV are we looking at? This is the same. It's ninety proof, or it's forty five percent alcohol. Okay, great. Let's, let's I think we should we should enjoy this a little longer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem there. Mm. But you get a different taste profile, and it depends on your taste. If you're making a cocktail, you may prefer this type of bourbon mm -hmm. because the rye tends to stick out and not be overwhelmed, whereas this one may get, get lost in a sweet type of cocktail, right? Mm -hmm. So, so depending want, on what you want and the taste you want. Yeah, you want maybe... Sometimes you want the balance, the cocktail. Yes. Because you have like all your other ingredients, yes. like the syrups or the right. So this may be a, too much of that sweet. sweetness coming through. So you have sweet, the sweet going right when you balance it with the rye. When you have the rye, it tends to perform a little. More, it's a little more outspoken. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great stuff. I have a bit of a dryness on well, that's the from the wood. Yes. That's from the wood. Yeah, okay. you get about a. If, if you look at our Eagle Rare, which is a couple years older than this, mm -hmm. it's the same recipe, exactly, except it's aged longer in a different part of the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And what that one does is not as balanced, and it's more dominant on the wood character. So it's even drier mm -hmm. and more mature. And some people like, they, they see the flavor being more intense because it's older too. But you'll get a lot drier, it's not as balanced. In other words, the other characters are there, but the wood is more dominant. So you have your, your recipe, then you mature it. This will be like right in the middle, 
And with the Eagle Rare, you're going more into yes. the wood side. And then you get into the Stag, which is really quite different. So you start getting into that 15, 16 year old category. Okay. Oh, that. that we have some of that in there if you want to. Okay. We'll try maybe, that later. Maybe later, yeah. And then the last one here is not a bourbon, but it's a straight rye. A straight rye. So a straight rye, the majority is rye, not corn. Majority is rye, so we're looking at a very spicy At one. least, fit, yeah, there you go. See, now you, you're going to taste the recipe, because you know the recipe, and now you should be able to taste the recipe. Okay. So when you taste this one, you're going to get the spiciness, but the secondary grain is corn, so you're going to get that sweetness still. So if you had a real high rye content, say you had 90% rye, and say 10% corn as an example. Okay. You're going to get all rye spiciness, very little sweetness from the corn. So when you taste this, you can almost guess the recipe because of the amount of sweetness you get from the corn. Ah, okay. Okay, so look at this one. Right away on the nose, and this, this one actually is aged around six to seven years. So the wood influence is not as going to be as dominant as the other ones. Okay. But I on the nose you do get, you get set definitely some wood. Beginning it had a bit of, it I don't know, a bit of fruitness, but oh, now yeah. I get a lot of spiciness. Oh, definitely. But pleasant. It's, it's, it reminds me of something. I'm not sure what it is. It's if you ever grind up this this grain rye, really grind it up and mm -hmm. put hot water and smell it, the aromatic characters, it smells like that. And oh, when you taste it, you're going to taste that spiciness too. Definitely more dominant with the spiciness. But at the same time, below that is that sweetness from the corn coming through. Mm. Yeah. And a little dryness at the end, the tip of the tongue. Yeah, I don't have that much sweetness. I have... Yes, more dominant rye character. That's yeah. the spiciness. But now it's like like bread. But yeah, <laughs> like rye bread. <laughs> hmm? Like rye bread. Like Yeah, like rye bread. See, if you went back to the weller now, without the rye, you'll see quite a difference between... Oh, okay, so... So if you went back to that one... That was the first one? Yeah. You can see right away on the nose that dramatic difference. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, you can. It's almost like it's a bit heavier. Which one? The the rye one. Well, it's definitely heavier with the uh, is spicing. It, is it also 45%? Yeah. So if you take this same recipe, mm -hmm. you can make our other rye, straight rye recipe, uh, products, and it's Thomas Handy, have you heard of that one? Part of our antique collection. And that's basically uncut, unfiltered version okay. of straight rye. Really intensifies the flavor of the rye. If you have uncut and straight, how much ABV are we looking at? Oh, that, it varies every year, but it's over 120 proof, so it'd be 60 something. 60, over yeah. 60, okay. Delicious. So, it might be a bit strong, but... If but it's you really good. It's not as strong as you might think. Okay. And uh, definitely, once we uh, finish here, we can actually taste some of that if you want. Okay. Unless you want to do it. Right. Um, we talked earlier about uh, the, the way you um, experiment with your whiskey. Yes. Can you tell me a bit... Bit, uh, about that now? Yeah, we, we believe that we make uh, great whiskeys already, but we haven't made the best whiskeys yet. And our whole, um, um, what we want to do is make the best whiskeys, mm -hmm. and we don't know how else to do that other than experiment. So, what we do on a regular basis is we experiment with so many, we, with all kinds of variables. It can be the barrel, it can be the recipe, can be the, um, you know, how we mix it together, the warehousing, the type of uh, ingredients we use. So we basically brainstorm ways of making better whiskey. Our last one came out under E.H. Taylor as the cured oak. Okay. And cured oak, all we did is we uh, actually aged it for 17 years, but we used 
13 month seasoned um, staves for the barrel. So if seasoned stave is usually, we, we usually age it around six months. That means it's aged in the open weather. You know, it, it really eradicates some of the undesirable components. So you cut the logs? Yes. Uh, put stack them, on them? A, yes. And then just leave them out right. for, that was? That well, was, we usually do it months, six months, months. Six months? But okay. this time we did it 13 months. 13 months. So just to see the difference and experiment. So is the experiment already over? Do you have yes, results? Yes. Um, how was it? Fabulous. <laughs> it's um, under. We released it under E. H. Taylor, mm -hmm. and it's so different from a normal seventeen-year-old whiskey. So we had to wait seventeen years to see that. Yeah, it's a long experiment. Patience. <laughs> Patience, obviously. We have a few in between anyway, so it doesn't matter. But that that one, it turned out to be a lot fruitier and sweeter than a normal 17 because usually the wood would dominate. It would be drier. Mm -hmm. And this one was really different. So I, I think it's an excellent whiskey for being 17 years old. And when you taste it, you can see the difference from a normal 17. So is it the best whiskey? I don't know. I think it's a great whiskey, but um, we're still trying to make the best whiskey. Yeah, the thing was, you're trying to, to improve your whiskey. Yes. Yeah, and trying to make the best whiskey, but I don't think you will ever get to the best whiskey. Well, then I have a job forever. <laughs> That's great. <Yeah. laughs> because how do you know you have the best whiskey? Well, by, <laughs> by what our customers, consumers think, mm -hmm. and by what the writers, the experts in the world think. We want that 100 you know, rating and our consumers to absolutely love the product. Okay, that's when you say, okay, this we've, is, we've done it. We've and it's a journey that <laughs> it's like continuous improvement, the way I look at it. Okay. We never get there, potentially, but we're, we're getting closer and closer all the time. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So, yeah, um, we're going to have a look now through all the, the buildings and through the production. Fantastic. And have a look how that stuff is actually made. Uh -huh. And, yeah, so thank you for having oh, you're us. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. And, yeah. Bye, guys. The Buffalo Trace Distillery has many ma mass market whiskies and many smaller whiskies. This year is the malt silo for the grain that is being filled into the large cooker that is used for the mass whiskies. And here we see the big cooker that cooks over, uh, on overpressure and at high temperatures and uh, all the different grains are inserted and then cooked inside this big cooker. And this is now the inside of a small cooker that is used for small batches like the Blendons. Now I'm here at the fermenters and these fermenters are the biggest in the industry. They hold about 92,000 gallons of uh, fermentable mash inside. And on, the, uh, on this side below is the sweet mash that it comes from the cooker and here we have the sour mash that just shoots out and makes the whiskey into a sour mash whiskey. On the far left side we have a ventilation system that takes out the CO2 um, because if you have such a big tank you have to look out for the CO2 otherwise you could suffocate in this room. After the fermentation, we enter the still house, where the beer is being distilled. And we can see this building is four stories tall, but the stories of the building are a bit higher than its usual, so this is a very tall still. There are advantages and disadvantages to distilling on such a high still. The, the advantage is that you get a very pure um, product, and the disadvantage is that you are left with uh, le less flavor particles so you get um, you have to get the flavor particles from the maturation and now we go to the spirit safe or the, as the Americans call it the tail house and the first one you see the spirit from the column still and the second is the raw whiskey that comes from the doubler after eight layers in the column still and the doubler you end up with a white dog at 148 proof or 
4% ABV. And here we see the heads and tails, which is the dangerous alcohols and the alcohols that give you headache. And here we see the leftovers from the distilling process. This is the sour mash that gets into the sour mash process or is transferred to cattle feed. So now we are at the filling of the barrel. And behind me, we have the storage tanks where the final white dog, the final distillate is being stored. And here uh, they do the proofing of the whiskey where they dilute the whiskey down for the barrel strength. And that is 125 proof or 62.5% ABV. And the spirit now comes through pipes in here and the barrels are being unloaded from the truck. They're from the independent stave company who make the white oak barrels. And here on the barrels, on these rivets, you can actually see where the um, barrels come from. And the MO stands for Missouri, and sometimes they come from Kentucky as well. After the filling process is done, these, uh, these gates uh, drop down and the uh, barrels are rolling onto this conveyor and getting processed even further. After the filling, all the barrels roll through here and here is a printing machine that prints a label on the barrel that says the distillery name, the distillery number, uh, where the distillery lies and how old uh, and the date when the barrel was filled. So you can identify every barrel by its date. So let's talk about maturation. Here at Buffalo Trace, you can have a great display about how the whiskey matures within the cask. Here we have a new barrel that has just been filled. It is uh, 53 gallons, that's about 200 liters. And during the first year, you lose about 10% of your alcohol that goes into the staves. And in the next years, you lose three to 4% ABV, uh, three to 4% volume, not ABV, uh, due to evaporation. And this is called the angel share. Um, this is a display of four, uh, four year old and in the lower level we have older ages and that here is nine years old and at Buffalo Trace we even have the very old whiskies and this is an 18 year old whisky. And what is very interesting about the bourbon is that the percentage ABV, the alcohol content within the cask is not going down but rising even a bit. This is due to the weather and other conditions. And so that is how the, uh, the barrel affects the whiskey and how whiskey matures. I'm here at warehouse number X at Buffalo Traces and they do a variation of the maturation of whiskey. And what they do here in warehouse X is they vary the, the light influences. Here you have the control group that is maturing in the normal way, like all the other whiskies. In the chambers on the left and right hand side, they do the variation with the light. With one, they have 100% uh, light. On the other side, they have 0% light. So it means uh, the, the whiskey is maturing in complete darkness. And there are another two chambers that are in between that. So, um, Buffalo Trace will find out how whiskey matures in different light levels. There are other warehouses that vary other variables like temperature, like the wood that is uh, uh, the whiskey placed in. If you want to find more about that, go to singleoakproject.com. That is their website for this project find out what consumers think about the different variations that Buffalo Trace did. Okay, so um, obviously Buffalo Trace has other warehouses where the normal whiskies are being stored and that's where the great Buffalo Trace whiskey comes from. There's also a little bit of balance for the doctor in Lexington, the doctor in Frankfurt, 
Shelby go to Louisville. Uh, so you and all ten kids win. <laughs> so you got a lot of That's right. Okay. Uh, so what do you think is The barrels roll in on these tracks and these tracks are everywhere on the premises of Buffalo Trace. This is how all the barrels are being transported and you see a few uh, elevators around the whole premises and then they roll down by gravity. Here you have the elevator lifting it up to have it on handling heights. Um, this is the first step for the barrel. It is a drill and that drill drills into the bung and usually the, the bung is then broken into two and the bung is taken out. Um, then you turn the barrel around and the whiskey flows down onto these filters here. And these filters uh, remove the charcoal that ha has been swollen by the whiskey and is now loose and you don't want that inside your bottle. So it's been filtered and the empty barrels uh, are roll, uh, transported on this conveyor and in the end of the line you have a rinse with water and that rinses out uh, the leftover char pieces and then you hammer in a new bung and it is being transported uh, internationally shipped to um, Scotch whiskey, Canadian whiskey and some tequilas as well. So I'm standing here in the quality lab and this is how the process at Blanton's work. Um, you take all the bottles, these are samples from the barrel and then you pour it into the glass and the group of people comes and tastes them all and rates them with quality and if one person doesn't like it they turn the bottle around and the, the whiskey is not being bar uh, bottled as a single barrel. I'm here at the bottling line for the single barrel bottles and all the small batches. So the barrel runs in here on these tracks and then is being emptied into this copper tray here. This copper tray collects it, runs it through the pipes into the cooling tanks and these cools it down to nearly freezing temperature. After it's been cooled down, we have these filters on the other side of the tank and these are cellulosis filters that filter out any parts that would cloud your whiskey when it's cool. After the whiskey is uh, taken through the filter, it goes to the top of the building and at the top of the building the proofing is done. So they are uh, reduced to drinking strength and then it's ready for bottling. Here we have the bottles coming in empty, being cleaned at, uh, with high pressure air to get out any dusts or any impurities. And then six bottles are being filled at a time. The next step is uh, the cork with the little horse on top. And I'm going to talk about that a little later. Also, the um, bottle gets a little collar and a little uh, string to break, break the seal. On the other side you see a running table and that table is there to put on the seal. Afterwards the collar is being taken off and goes into waste because you don't want the bits of the seal going around. Uh, the next step these uh, people here put on the labels with hot glue and all the labels are being handwritten. After a bit of clean, cleaning the bottle. Um, the bottles are being put into cardboard boxes and put onto uh, big pallets and being shipped internationally for everybody to enjoy. So the cork for the Blantons is something very special. Um, you have eight different corks and every cork has a letter at the bottom. And it starts with B and ends with S and spells Blantons. And the corks display a horse race. Here at the beginning, at the parade, the horse and the rider stand up and then they start and go into sprint. And during the horse race, the horse passes 
a few um, posts and then also you have the whip to make the horse go faster and then here the, the rider finishes the race in the end he raises his fist to show yeah he has won the race so if you want to buy uh, if you want to have all the eight stages you have to buy at least eight Blentons and they are distributed very randomly so that was it for uh, the Buffalo Trace distillery and it is a big ground and I certainly have not filmed everything and um, if you're ever in Kentucky then you have to drop by by Buffalo Trace it is a great distillery and if you want to know more about all the bottles then check out our database at whiskey.com where we have all the information about the bottles. Thank you for watching and if you like the video then please give me a thumbs up.